God reveals himself to us in two ways, the general way and the specific way. Today, we're going to look at the general way and we'll leave the specific way for another video. Understanding Psalms chapter 19 verse 1 in the everyday language is important. Psalms 19 1 says, I quote, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands, unquote. Now this simple yet profound verse invites us to look up and recognize that God reveals himself through nature and our own inner sense of right and wrong, our conscience, if you like. So let us explore how this works and what it means for us today. Now the idea here is that God has made himself known to everyone through what he has made, what he has created. Now this concept is called the general revelation. It is different from specific or special revelation like the Bible or the teachings of Jesus, which are specific and detailed. But general revelation is a broad and accessible to everyone, regardless of their background or knowledge of religious text. In Romans chapter 1 verse 20 echoes this thought, I quote, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse." Unquote. In other words, by observing the natural world, we can see evidence of God's power and God's divine nature. It's like God has left his signature everywhere for us to find. Now the heavens do tell a story, and what does that mean? I want you to imagine standing outside on a clear night, looking up at the stars. It's breathtaking, isn't it? That the sense of awe you feel isn't just a random reaction. According to Psalms 19.1, the vastness and the beauty of this universe that you're looking at are like a billboard declaring God's glory. It is as if the stars and the planets and the galaxies are all pointing to their creator, as if they're saying, look at how magnificent he is, the creator is. Now this isn't just about appreciating a pretty night sky. The complexity and the order of the universe suggests there is a designer behind it all. Think about the precise way the earth orbits the sun, the perfect conditions that allow life to thrive here on earth. I mean, these aren't just coincidences. They speak of a powerful, intelligent creator who designed everything with great care. You see, in Psalms it says the sky shows his craftsmanship. And what does this mean? Well, let's think about the skies during the day. The way the sun rises and sets, painting the sky with vibrant colors or how clouds form intricate patterns. According to the, to the Psalms, the verse, all these details proclaim the work of God's hands. Every sunrise, every rainbow and every cloud formation is a, like a piece of art created by God. When we see this, we get a glimpse of God's creativity and attention to detail. It is as if nature is God's canvas and he's just constantly creating and recreating masterpieces for us to enjoy and marvel at. Now this idea is reinforced through the Bible, throughout the Bible, and emphasizing that the creation itself is a testament to God's ongoing work and his presence. And that's nature. Now let's look at our conscience, our inner guide. Besides revealing himself through nature, God also speaks to us through our conscience. Our conscience is that like an inner voice that nudges us toward what is right and it warns us against what is wrong. Now, this moral compass, this internal moral compass is another form of God's general revelation. Romans chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 talks about this, I quote, Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are law for themselves. 
they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. Their conscience also bearing weakness." Unquote. What this means is that even without knowing specific religious laws, Gentiles being people perhaps who does not know the law, they are people who can sense God's moral standards because they are written in their hearts without reading about it. This internal sense of right and wrong written in their hearts points to a lawgiver, suggesting that our moral instinct written in our hearts are not just societal constructs, but reflections of God's character and God's expectation for us. Now, sometimes you might think, why don't we always see it? Well, see, if God's revealing himself, you can ask the question through nature and through our conscience, why don't we always recognize it? Well, often it's because we are not paying attention ourselves. Modern life is full of distractions. Our busy schedules, our technology and constant noise can drown out those subtle revelations by God through nature and, and conscience. We might appreciate a beautiful sunset or feel the sting of guilt, but we don't always connect this beauty and this experiences to God's communication with us because that's what it is. So Psalms 19.1 reminds us to be more mindful and intentional. It encourages us to pause and encourage us to reflect on the beauty around us and the moral insights within us, our conscience, recognizing them as God's way of reaching out to us. You don't have to read the Bible to experience all this. Now let's talk about how can we apply it today. Well, understanding that God reveals himself through nature, through our conscience, has practical implications. Now let's look, go through all of them. Number one, cultivate awe and gratitude. Take time to appreciate the natural world, whether it is a walk in a park, whether it's a watching a sunset or stargazing. Let these experiences deepen your sense of wonder, your sense of awe and gratitude toward God, because that's the way he's communicating with you. Number two, listen to your conscience. Pay attention to that inner voice. When you feel nudged to do something good or avoid something harmful, recognize it is God's guidance and you need to attempt to act accordingly according to this guidance. Number three, be a steward of creation. If nature is God's creation, then we have a responsibility to take care of nature, take care of it. This means being mindful of our environment, and making choices that protect the world around us. Number four, share the wonder with others. When talking about God with others, use example from nature and human conscience. These are universal experiences that can resonate with anyone, regardless of their religious background. So in conclusion, Psalms 19.1 indeed is a very powerful reminder that God is constantly revealing himself to us through the beauty of nature, and the order of the natural world and the moral compass that is got within us. By being more attentive to these revelations, we can deepen our relationship with God, live more ethically and inspire others to recognize the divine signature in our everyday lives. So next time you marvel at the stunning view or the sunset, or you feel a gentle tug on your conscience, remember, it's God making himself known to you. Amen to that.